get to that vision of where the Garden Dickinson School should be. And so that's what should be presented sometime around budget time because it will have some budgetary implications potentially. Uh, and hopefully, we'll be fast. Hopefully, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll we will institutionalize the process so that every year that this becomes a, what we do normally. It's not like put it on 09, we'll put it on the 09 shelf, as we heard. But we want to have this about part of our, our annual way to conduct business. We can check what the plan was, we can modify it going forward, and hopefully that will be a structure in place. So it won't be so subject to the vagaries of maybe new boards coming in or new, new leadership coming in that there's there's a commitment to this kind of direction, you know, with modifications as we learn more information going forward. So so that's that's really our if we if we don't get to that point, then we really have not succeeded. We really need to get because sometimes strategic planning gets the criticism justifiably that it's the plan to plan to plan. We need to get Yeah. Okay. So You'll be 22 right now. 22. And uh, we have the other 20. Yeah. And they yeah, represent a cross section of the community, of teachers, okay. administrators, community members, mm -hmm. many of whom were on the on the focus groups. Okay. And um, so and parents. So we have the whole board members. So. Right. Yeah, and I'm and I'm thrilled that you know we're and more members to be part of it. Absolutely. I think that's a great uh, relationship with the board. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be good. That'll be great communication. And um, other strategic communication. That's the one I want to ask about. Yes. That's going to be the subset of it. Part of the strategic plan will include a communications component. I can't, I don't think we can get enough people to do something separately and independently. But that's what I was thinking. Okay. So I, I would like some definite focus on yeah, communication. Yeah. So whether it be a subcommittee of that group, and I'm actually interested in doing that. And, uh, so okay. uh, Jason had an interest as well. Great. Yeah. Well, we can separate it out if you wish. Um, I can understand though not necessarily being able to get, you know, with There's 20 people capacity on the other. Issue yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah, there is. But strategic um, planning but typically see, we, you has know, a subcomponent of communication. I think we're, I, I do think that strategic planning is going to have a lot. I, I, would, I would think. I do. I just want to focus on it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I just don't want it to be a little piece of a bigger. I know. Because, of, you know, unfortunately, I think everybody always plans on a, you know, improving communication or planning for communication. And it's always that one thing that just always needs to take the back. For us, it had to be a little bit more but we're well, determined to do it. That's the other thing is I think the strategic planning based on what you've described, um, which I think is a good idea. You know, it's kind of a let's get a plan in place, let's update it. So that's sort of a, a lot of concentrated effort in one period of time, and then you're kind of laying low for a while until it's time to update it. Where I think my thought on the communication is sort of a <coughs> check in on going. Yeah. Well, the part of the action plan, though, will have, you may spur other committees to do the action, you know, to make sure we do yep. certain things and assess certain things. So it's going to be. Well, January 9th is certainly soon enough, and I'm comfortable waiting to see kind of what yeah. comes out of that. Um, the first session. Yeah. And, and as you know, in the first session is, is uh, going to be talking about beliefs of this community, our values. Reevaluate the mission, the vision. You know that's going to be a lot of that sharing of information, how people see it. Obviously, from people who don't have any children here and they're maybe senior citizens, and they're maybe looking looking at the school district in a different way than someone who is a parent of a first grader, and and so on and so forth. So that I mean, all that teachers, career teachers in the district, their commitment to this Garden Dickinson School, and uh, so everybody's going to have different pieces. So we need to develop consensus around what do we believe in, what do we believe the school district should be. So that's part of the conversation in the beginning. And then ultimately we look at those beliefs and values and how do we come up with specific actions to, to 
twice to advance the mission. It makes sense. You're planning on internally facilitating that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 no. Well, I heard Questar was a non-starter, and I'm so less expensive. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Uh, staffing overview, that's just information. My understanding from Gail, that was an annual kind of update, but I'm not sure. I mean, we actually asked for it during the budget last okay. year. Okay. Um, and I think this is actually even... Uh, yeah. 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 So, so just, just kind of an overview. This is what our current status is. There's no, you know, I, there's no other agenda in that. Uh, we'll deal with that later uh, as we go through the budget process. Okay. Um, maybe update the yeah. then. Indeed. Great. And then the tuition piece, my understanding, that also has been a, an annual update. You see the, the four schools plus um, mm -hmm. uh, Tech Valley. And, and I'm going to jump over to something that's written on my notes and not yours. Um, but uh, we've been working with our guidance person here and Mary, and uh, we've, we've communicated with each of the four schools, uh, as well as Tech Valley, looking at a better process. And it's still Sorry. For, Sorry. for the students, our eighth yeah. grade students, mm -hmm. getting feedback. Um, Bryn Kill was very aggressive. They came with their staff to have a meeting uh, with us and did a little tour of the schools and new personnel. And we decided in the, just one piece of this. We were still we were questioning whether the shadow day was effective or not. It seems that from kids' perspective as well as from the receiving schools that it was effective. So we'll, we'll keep that in place. We certainly will have parents do the traditional open houses and make sure they're aware of but we're also going to have high school career day in the afternoon. So each of the four schools will be like a college fair day. Oh, that's you can great. go to the University of Detroit or the University of And they all agree to, to do well, it. Well, it seemed like one would read after they heard the other would read. Of course, they don't want to be left out. <laughs> so, so we'll have it in this room, perhaps, or maybe in the cafeteria, where we'll, they'll have their little booth. And then we'll structure the kids to come and visit each of the different booths, and they'll have their materials. And so there won't be any presentations. There'll be little present, mini presentations for each of the kids, and certainly the interaction of the staff will continue with the with the shadow day, but it'll be an interaction. Shadow day going to be before they have to make the decision after. It'll be before that they make the decision. Yeah, that's a, I mean that's a big thing is if we can. And I know scheduling is always tight, but I think it's imperative that these kids get to go visit the schools before yeah. they have to make a decision. It, it, it's a huge yeah. difference for them leaving, right. especially if they're trying here. to decide between, right. you know, one or two. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then we're going to bring them in, them and then they'll, they'll have the four hats, and they'll put their hat on. <laughs> Come on, we'll make it a little more dramatic than in the past. <laughs> with the tamarack <laughs> now, now, Lee, um, in the past, I think it was probably been two or three years or, or longer, probably, um, a couple of board members met with uh, you know, some of the administration. Are we thinking of, of doing that again? Yeah, we talked about that. I, I, okay. I mean, I do think, like for me as a board member, it was beneficial. I felt, I, you know, because we, you know, ultimately decide on these choices. I do. I like. I mean, I don't have to hear it directly, but I do like to hear some of the, the feedback. I, I think you know it's you know I think it's really beneficial as a board member when we sit and decide. And, and I mean, I'm today. I'm just looking at numbers. Right. You know. So well, why I, don't you, if you want to, you and I need to connect on that and see okay. how we can structure it on their end because we're dependent on their end. And there's varying degrees of interest in each of the four schools about us right now. Oh really? Varying degrees. Mm -hmm. So. I know. I, I, like I'm just looking at. I thought it remembered it being around five or six. I thought it was around thirty-eight or forty-eight or five. Wow. But, uh, I mean, I'm looking at numbers, and I would love to have input with numbers because it would help me as a board member. I don't know how you guys feel. You're looking at it. I mean, those numbers are pretty. 
You mean the pretty significantly the, different. The tuition numbers? Yeah. My understanding is Troy caps it. They do not use the state formula. The other schools use state formula. The state formulas are driven not by the local district, but by by a formula that's generated by the state. And then the school district has the right to reduce that number. We do that for a little red, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Yeah. So I believe But I, I remember believe a few like actually when I first got on the board, this they did tap it, and it jumped right. unbelievably. And so I think maybe that's just the negative reaction they have to us making us when they're tapping it. Yeah, but we're not going to make a big deal out of it. So whatever it is, we we'll keep it nice. And <laughs> yeah, we like, oh, yeah, we we like it. Yeah, we like it at this point. It's but wrong. We do good. like it. But I know you were parking this as well here, if I remember correctly, way back when your history they popped, they skyrocketed. They actually just stopped admitting our students. Yes. So. So we've had back and forth. I, I mean, I think it's awesome having the choices. And, you know, one time we, we only had Troy as the one option. And I think it's awesome that we have different choices and, we, and um, kids can kind of see where they fit in and where they feel comfortable. But as a board member, I'm looking at these numbers. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we really should be giving these choices. Is there enough of a benefit? For well, you know, the a, a difference of the East Greenbush has dollars less interest, a couple reasons, but uh, mm -hmm. there's well, cost. Hardly have any. Yeah, and and I think because of their early start time, we've gotten feedback that these kids have to get on buses really early, early in the morning, mm -hmm. so they find it very mm -hmm. like six, six thirty. Yeah, six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock. Yeah. 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 I think because yeah. typical pickup. Well, and then yeah. my other concern is we have all these choices. The tuition is a little bit higher, but then we're transporting two kids, yeah. you know, uh, or four but kids. I, yeah. or I think that what happens is our kids get to St. Timothy's, and then an East Greenbush they bus them gets them at St. Timothy's. So we're not driving them all the way to but Columbia. I, I don't know we're where we're going as shopping. far as, like, for Brunswick. Yeah. You know, we, we have, I don't know how many kids are in Tamarack right now. What's on here? Um, in the 21, but 17 regular ed. Um, and they, they're the most interested in um, in getting more students right now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> the other, the other piece... Right. And look at the right. The right. <laughs> well, I did mention that. It's three times the amount. My, my, um, are, are also conversations, and I forgot, and I'm sorry, I didn't see you earlier, um, was um, we want to make certain that we know ahead of time that if there's specific requisites we're getting into honors programs or accelerated okay. programs yeah. or certain testing. I mean, I'm apologizing to people in the fall that I need to just help them know. Yeah. So yeah. now I, I do know them, yeah. so it would be my fault. But we, we certainly are communicating to make certain that if they have a specific program related to or assessments related to whether the child goes into a honors English or an accelerated English class, that we know ahead of time so our students would not be they don't miss the opportunity. Miss the opportunity. Absolutely. Which happened last year. Right, absolutely. But I think, you know, I, I would just, I would like to know as a board member, I don't know how you guys all feel. I'd like a little more information as to um, benefits and, you know, and how our kids are doing and what are the benefits of having this many choices. Are they the right choices? So I don't, I don't know. When do we have to? Um, I don't know. Do we, well, we what, what, how, what, what are our contracts like? I'm not certain. I can research that. I don't, I don't remember voting. I remember voting when there's a change, but I think there. But I think that we were, we had a, one of them wasn't us for the number of years, right? On the I think Columbia, you had a five-year contract with Columbia. Columbia so I, was I thought East Greenbush was five years at a time that they were going to And what about I will research that and get back okay. to you on Yeah, that. I would like some more. Ms. Murphy, we um, were meeting with Ava Park, and, um, and you, you, met, you met with Mr. English. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting to hear back on times from Ava Park. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and you and I need to get together about how we structure that for the business. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and then I, um, I just want you to be aware of a, a, a formal invitation. Last year, they, the site was at uh, East Greenbush, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if you, anybody attend. But th this actually, they felt they had the most uh, impact of changing the budget um, in locally was, um, I think it's 100 school districts, and um, all are invited. There's certain representation, certainly board, certain staff, community members, parents, and it's scheduled for January 30th at South Colony High School. I have more information on that. I want to do it before the, the uh, holiday break here. And, uh, but just to be aware of that, it's coming, and we certainly want our staff to be there and our, our parents to be there as well. Who will be there? All the local assembly, senate will be there as well and talk about the impact that certainly the implementation of the Common Core has had on the budget and the kind of need that if you're going to go in this direction, you've got to support them financially. It's another unmandated, uh, un un unfunded mandate. So, that should be a big event. I think we should be well represented, re represented at the so it's January the 3rd. That's it. Sorry. Yeah. So long. Other questions? Thank you. Thanks. All right. 2.24 um, of education report and update. So um, new school, school board member uh, selection. Um, we talked about a selection process last time. Um, we were hoping to squeeze it in by this meeting, but it just felt too rushed and no one had time to prepare adequately, including the candidates. Um, so we are going to, we have actually three applications, um, Patricia Gray, um, Jim Flanagan, and Katrina Dynan, who's a former um, school board member. So um, it's great that we have three to choose from, which is wonderful. And we're going to be um, holding, we should probably talk about dates um, in early January, because now we have a, a not, January not 9th day. I believe there is support and for um, holding public interviews, um, correct? Yes, everybody comfortable? All right, so we're going to hold public interviews. Um, we'll try to figure out a way to make it fair for the candidates. Um, is that, I mean, are we bound to do that publicly? No. No, we're not bound. We just, in the spirit of, I think we had talked about doing public interviews because we're going to do it at a meeting. Yeah, you know, sure. timing, but do we necessarily have to do it? I, I mean, I just would want well, to feel uncomfortable. I don't want people to feel uncomfortable, but yet they're going to have to be up in front of the public in like another, you know, week or two after that. Um, right. The only reason I thought a public meeting prior to the next regular meeting is because it would be nice and safe starting in January to have the January meeting be able to be their first meeting where they can actually act. So that's why I just thought if we did a resolution before. So, oh, so we would actually have to have a special board meeting? A special board meeting. Yeah. So yeah. I think that that's what you were recommending as well, right? Um, your your deliberation nice would be an executive session. Right. So you're looking to do all this in one night, three interviews of the um, I, I don't know all of them. I know Jim Flanagan. I know that 
Jim had his serve public, you know, in, right. in public yeah. life. I don't think that uh, him not doing a public interview suggests that he doesn't have it sit in front of the public and, you know, listen to the public essay. And I'm sure that the other two individuals, I look at the resume, and they seem to be impeccable. I'll, I'll, I'll do it all in one night, and I'll do it either way, but my preference would be to speak with them privately. Yeah. Yeah, what was your experience? I know you had experience and had suggested the possibility of in public at Ichabod? Yes, well, in, in Lansingburg it was uh, private, mm -hmm. and then uh, Ichabod <coughs> had the tradition of doing it in public, and uh, it worked uh, so for, for me, because I tend to be a little bit on the other side. Thinking. But it actually was very positive in public. Uh, and they've done subsequent ones in the public. Uh, I thought it worked pretty well. But, uh, and the questions yep. were asked and people responded. And it, uh, and I thought the community felt good about it and people, all people looked good at it. And you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like uh, anybody was uncomfortable. But I think that's your Did opinion. you come back with the position? In those cases, um, I don't recollect, uh, could have been, they may have come, they certainly deliberated that, but I'm not sure if they, they started the next time the board met. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I don't think they actually crowned the person yeah. that night, the other two walked away. I think it was, it was the next meeting that they, the person started and the other people and, and the other three were always, and three or four were always encouraged to run for the board because this is only until right, May. Right, right, yep. So and actually it gives an opportunity. And actually the running very soon, yeah, really yeah, in a couple yeah. months. Yeah. So it actually, to my surprise, worked quite effectively, very right, well. I don't know, I guess I just was in favor of it, not, not really kind of a prove yourself to the public kind of thing, but more just in the spirit of kind of the communication and the transparency and openness that I think we need to strive for. But, you know, I do see your point on, you know, there definitely can be a, a better comfort level and we can get a little bit of, you know, not necessarily a different answer, but uh, I can see people feeling more comfortable in a private I, setting. I, would, I mean, I, I would think that somebody might be a little more relaxed and a little more themselves. But I'm not, I, I don't know if I feel strongly enough either way. I mean, I would be, what, I mean, whatever the majority wants, I'm okay with. I just, I always, like, I just think it's a little uncomfortable with them, us going to deliver, us coming back and 